Well, thank you very much, Eric, for that uh, introduction. And uh, I'd like to thank the Swiss Mining Institute for the opportunity to present Genesis today. Uh, we are a relatively new company, only uh, having been um, uh, the genesis of Genesis, so to speak, is uh, uh, it was created by way of a plan of a arrangement or a merger with an existing Toronto-based junior that had the, the key asset within the company, the Chevrolet Gold Project in Quebec. Uh, and it was previously held by a Toronto junior. Uh, the, to the predecessor company to Genesis merged with the Toronto Junior and uh, consequently we have only been on the property or have had control of the property since uh, March of 2016. Uh, I think we've achieved a lot in the last 18 months but I'll just give you an overview of what we've uh, done to date and what our future plans are. Uh, I'll just refer you to the forward-looking statements. Uh, I will be uh, making some forward-looking statements about future activities and plans and I just uh, want to <coughs> draw your attention to this statement. Uh, so just quickly, uh, highlights, we have a very competent management team and board uh, with a record of discovery and successful sale of assets uh, to larger companies. Uh, we're in Quebec. Uh, it's a top rated uh, mining jurisdiction, one of the top rated mining jurisdictions in the world in terms of mineral tenure, certainty of title, and so on. Um, our Chevrolet Gold Deposit is still open for expansion at depth and potentially a long strike. Uh, we have uh, actually the deposits in plural. Uh, there's a main zone and a south zone, which I'll, I'll describe in some detail. Uh, we have a very large land position, which opens the possibility for new discoveries on, uh, on an area that's been uh, quite, uh, quite well uh, drilled, but potentially poorly explored over the last 25 to 30 years. Uh, we currently are uh, just uh, close to finalizing a 10,000 meter drill program as we, uh, as we speak. As uh, I, I'm chairman and CEO, as Eric uh, mentioned, uh, I'd just like to also highlight Jeff Sunder, who's here with me, uh, president and also a director. Um, Andre Liboron is our uh, Quebec-based exploration manager, long experience in the Abitibi. Adrian Fleming um, may be well known to you as the former president of Underworld Resources. Uh, quite a, a significant discovery was made in the Yukon Territory of Canada and subsequently sold to Kinross Mining for 160 million Canadian dollars. Uh, and uh, just a couple of other key individuals, John Florick is currently chief geologist at Detour Gold and we're very pleased to have John as a director. Uh, Rob McLeod uh, is a strategic advisor as is uh, Eric Lemieux, uh, our uh, chairman here today, and a uh, very, very uh, good range of competencies as well as experience that can help uh, management direct the company. Uh, just a snapshot of our corporate structure. We currently have about 74.8 million shares outstanding, basically. Uh, you can see the fully diluted there with the warrant structure. Warrant prices are available on our website for those that are interested. We closed a $4 million financing Canadian in uh, June of this year, attracted the uh, quite significant attention of uh, some significant new shareholders, the Cisco Mining, Eric Sprott, Gold 2000, Delbrook Capital, a fund from Vancouver, US Global Investors out of Texas, and the two Quebec sovereign funds, SIDEX and SDBJ. Uh, so our shareholding distribution looks uh, like the pie chart at the top there. Uh, very pleased to have these new corporate uh, uh, places, shareholders in our story. The $4 million that was raised has allowed us to complete the 10,000 meter program that I mentioned on the property. Uh, just a quick location sketch. Uh, our two projects, we have a project in Ontario, so we literally bookend the Abitibi sub-province in eastern Canada. Uh, we have Shibugamu, town of 6,000 people. I think it was mentioned in Namaska's presentation. Uh, it's a key, uh, a key uh, infrastructure port in a point in northern, uh, northern Quebec. Excellent road access, train access, daily flights to Montreal. Uh, so an excellent base of operations. And in Ontario, we have the October Gold property, much earlier stage than Chevrolet. Uh, and it sits in, a, uh, in the Swayze Greenstone Belt. And I'll talk briefly about that property at the end of the presentation. Very prolif prolific history of gold production, as you can see, between the Timmins Camp, Baldor, and uh, Kirkland Lake, over 170 million ounces, a very, very productive area of the world. Uh, some quick highlights on the Chevrolet project. Uh, we're 35 kilometers southwest of Shibugamu with excellent access and infrastructure, as I mentioned. 
We cover approximately 15 kilometers of the fan camp deformation zone, which is the main structural break or control on gold mineralization in this uh, part of the belt. Uh, now, we, uh, we, there is a compliant resource that was completed in 2010, uh, and it came up with 300,000 ounces at 1.99 grams. This is not what attracted us to the property. Uh, there were previous historical pre-43-101 resource estimates uh, issued by very competent groups such as InMet, which was the old Falcon Bridge Copper, for those familiar with Canadian mining history, uh, and others uh, that pointed to a much, much larger resource estimate. And it was that potential for the larger resource estimate that attracted us to the property. Um, and uh, so I mentioned also the main zone is open. The south zone is the second zone of mineralization. It has had limited drilling, uh, but we anticipate a, at least a 6,000 meter program in Q1 of next year. And we believe that will provide sufficient infill drill density to allow us to calculate an inferred resource for the south zone as well. Um, just some highlights from the 2010 report. You can see the main zone described there uh, in terms of the tonnage. I'll just draw your attention also to the south zone. Uh, the report writers, METCHEM, in 2010, uh, believed that there was insufficient drill density to calculate an inferred resource at that time, but they highlighted the potential for somewhere between 8 to 9 million tons of somewhere between 1.8 to 2.2 grams per tonne. Uh, in the south zone, the south zone is physically separate from the main zone, approximately a kilometer to the south. And the key is that if you do the arithmetic on those numbers, you can easily see a situation where there's potentially another five to 600,000 ounces in the south zone. Uh, it's by way of access, I've mentioned the town of Shibugamu. Uh, is a well-serviced airport here, which is the, uh, the quickest way to get to the property for a day trip, and literally a day trip can be done. Uh, scheduled flights from Montreal, uh, and then uh, a well-maintained uh, access road down through the center of our project to both the, uh, the main zone and the south zone. High-voltage um, high power lines transect the property, excellent road infrastructure, paved roads going down to Quebec City and to Montreal. Uh, for those of you who may remember some of the names, some of the town names, uh, Val d'Or, which is a very prolific camp, is approximately 200 kilometers to the west of this particular area that you see on the, on the slide. Uh, a little more detail, a fairly significant land position in red here, the main zone and the south zone highlighted with the, uh, the gold stars. This is the fan camp deformation zone. Uh, just key considerations, uh, this is the Monster Lake property owned by Toma Gold. I am Gold is currently earning in to, uh, has an option on the property to earn 70% by spending $17 million Canadian. Uh, they've spent $2 million this year, and we understand that they are on track for a maiden resource for this property, which would be a very interesting catalyst in the whole belt. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, the nearest operating mine is the Bachelor Lake, so the Metanor mine of Bachelor Lake, approximately 100 kilometers to the west. Um, you can see Copper One here. Uh, Shibugamu was traditionally always viewed as a copper-rich camp. It, uh, the gold potential has been realized to the south of uh, the city itself. Uh, but of particular interest is the former producing Joe Man Mine, which closed in 2002. Uh, and it still maintains, and actually it's a permitted tailings facility, still exists on that property. So that does present some synergies to any potential development either here on uh, I Am Gold's property, Toma Gold's property, or on our Chevrolet project in terms of uh, development scenarios that might expedite both timeline and cost effectiveness. Uh, for those of you familiar with the permitting process in Canada, uh, with the streamlined integrated approach, it's typically fi five years, and most of that time is involved with wastewater management, tailings design, acid rock drainage. Having a permitted tailings facility close by is a very, very significant positive aspect for the project. Uh, just some quick, uh, it seemed like uh, it's only 18 months, but we achieved a lot of work last year. Having, uh, having a lot of historic drill core uh, available, we've made sure and documented all that core. There's approximately 70,000 meters of core available. We can establish the provenance of that core, which is an important consideration as, uh, in terms of compliance for TSX purposes to ensure that historic data can be used in an updated resource. Um, the, the core boxes are well located, well labeled, well marked, so we know where they are. 
Um, a key consideration, though, is what was typical in the 80s and 90s in, uh, in Canada in particular. A lot of money was spent on drilling, but money was saved by not sampling or assaying the entire core. It sounds strange, but uh, that was the methodology. So we see in these drill holes, these historic drill holes, that much of the core has never been sampled. We are going back to resample some of the core to see if there's been opportunities that may have been overlooked by previous workers. Um, we achieved all this last year. We compiled all the data for the project, completed the financing early this year, completed uh, 3D geological models for the, uh, the major zones on the property. Uh, and this is what uh, some of the resampling of historic core. So these are 43101 compliant um, assays of historic core that has been previously sampled, and it's to confirm a one-to-one -one correlation with uh, old and, and new data. I'm proud to say that there is a very, very close correlation. Uh, we knew the integrity and the pedigree of the people who had worked previously on the property. We did not expect to see any great variance. We were, um, we were actually um, proud to say that there is a one-to-one -one, one correlation between the old and the new. And as you can see, it's a, it's a fairly significant range of opportunities here, some uh, wider intervals of um, reasonable grade and getting some higher grade intervals as well developed. The main zone does come to surface. It's exposed over about uh, one point or it's been traced over at least one kilometer strike extent and it can be upwards of 125 meters thick. So a very significant mineralized package. Uh, in this year, as I mentioned, we're close, we're close to the completion of a 10,000 meter program. It was done in two phases, each of 5,000 meters. This is just highlighting the first 5,000 meter program. Uh, you can see the holes that we drilled. A lot of the work that we needed to do with the redrilling is about validation of the historic data, and that involves either twinning existing holes, which is trying to attempt to drill very closely to an existing drill hole to see if you can repeat assays from that older hole, as well as infill drilling, uh, by which you can then validate a larger volume of rock. Um, every project that the TSX reviews in terms of resource estimates based on historic drill data is viewed on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we have retained a very good uh, resource modeling group in Toronto who has been through uh, this process several times in terms of the integration of historic data. Uh, so we are looking at working with them in terms of achieving uh, a meaningful and cost-effective method to allow us. We believe that we believe that the current 10,000 meter program will provide sufficient new drill holes into the existing mineralized area to allow us to use the historic database in an updated resource. I won't spend too much time on this. This is an iteration, a very iterative process, geological models. I've mentioned the approximate dimensions. It's about at least one kilometer. It's about 125 to 150 meters across strike. And this modeling is based on historic data. So where you see these black uh, gaps, it's really a lack of sampling. The core was never sampled. We've gone back to resample that, and those assays are unfortunately not at our possession at the present time. Uh, while on the topic of assaying, there's uh, probably a two-month turnaround in terms of assays from the laboratory. Uh, at the current time, in Quebec, there are cumulatively um, something in the range of 1.3 million meters of drilling being completed and all trying to squeeze through maybe two to three assay laboratories. So consequently, everybody has been told to wait patiently for results, and we are one of them. Uh, so uh, we have released all the assays from the first phase, first 5,000 meters of drilling. Uh, the second phase is due to complete at the end of uh, this month, and we expect uh, all those assays to be in our possession and be released to the market by mid-January. Uh, just, uh, this is a long section, uh, actually along the plane of the uh, uh, imaginary line drawn through the middle of the deposit area itself. Uh, and what we've done is put uh, a grade coloring sc scheme, everything above 0.5 grams is encapsulated in, the, uh, in that shaded pattern there. It does display uh, an apparent southerly rake or southwestern rake. But also, if I'll draw your attention to this being 200 meter spacing between um, uh, lines here, uh, indicator lines on this grid pattern. So a very significant uh, uh, area of mineralization. Uh, some of the first phase of redrilling there, some of the highlights from that first phase results which were released a few weeks ago. Uh, hole nine, which is in the southern end of the main zone, uh, returned 2.94 grams over a true width of 37 meters. 
and contained four meters of 14 grams. So we are spending some time looking at the potential for expanding this higher grade uh, interval towards the south. And uh, some of our drill holes in this second phase, the current phase of drilling that we're doing now is focused in this area. Um, this is uh, basically, uh, we expect to put in at least 6,000 meters into the main zone of the 10,000 meters. The remaining 4,000 has been uh, allocated to testing new targets on the property. Uh, here are the new targets. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time. There's multiple targets. Our main focus is uh, attempting to move the main zone and the south zone to compliant resource status next year. And uh, we will get around to uh, evaluating each of these other target horizons at some stage next year as well. Uh, so just some uh, timeline highlights here. Uh, Q4, we're actually on track with everything you see there in Q4 of this year. Uh, Q1, I mentioned the drilling of the south zone. Uh, we're, we're providing guidance to everybody that it would be Q2 for a resource update. Um, if in our meeting with the resource modeler we see a, uh, a much, much faster track to get a resource update out for the main zone, then that could, uh, it could move uh, earlier into the year. But I think it's probably best that we leave it at this conservative assessment at this stage in terms of timing uh, so that we don't, uh, we always uh, under promise and hopefully over deliver. Uh, within that timeline, with the drilling of the south zone tentatively slated for Q1, we could reasonably expect Q3 for a resource update for the south zone. Um, just before leaving, at a macro, macroscopic scale, I think our target uh, ounces, you know, we need to be, probably be on the high side of 1.5 million ounces globally on the project uh, to be able to move to a stage where we could consider a PEA for the property. Uh, we have no aspirations of building a mine. Um, certainly there are people more skilled at doing that and our idea would be to uh, try and attract uh, a junior mining company, uh, sorry, a junior producer or mid-tier producer as a potential partner for the property. I'll just briefly mention the uh, October Gold property, uh, which is located south of the fairly famous mining town of Timmins, Ontario, here. Uh, it's a, an area that's recently seen quite a lot of activity with major discoveries and major corporate transactions. Uh, just in a little more detail, our property, fairly significant land position. This is I Am Gold's Cote Lake property. It had sat on the shelf in terms of development schedule for several years. Large capex, low grade deposit, and uh, Sumitomo has just recently invested $250 million to earn 30% of the project which potentially represents a green light for the development of the project. Um, our property it basically uh, borders the, uh, the Cote Lake property. And along this trend, there's been a lot of activity. Uh, the Borden Lake acquisition uh, by Gold Corp, uh, development is underway there, and they plan to truck the material to Timmins, which, as I mentioned, is approximately 100 kilometers away. So a lot of activity in this area. We have no immediate plans to work on the property next year. Our focus is Chevrolet, uh, but we do see this as presenting some options to the company in terms of potentially uh, monetizing uh, the property package or attracting a joint venture partner uh, or potentially a cash buyout with a retained royalty. So with that, uh, I'd just like to summarize. We have a, a gold deposit in a very safe environment in Eastern Canada. Um, we have drill results coming out in Q1, potential to have uh, at least one resource estimate in the first half of next year with a second to follow for the south zone, uh, a large land package that offers potential still for new discoveries and uh, strong potential for value re-rating uh, upon the delivery of an updated resource. With that, I'd just like to conclude and thank you very much for your attention.